Lisa Brown, and this is my project, and it's called Assist. So we'll go ahead and log in, and I'll show it to you. And it looks like this. So the original inspiration behind this project was I have a friend, and she's getting married, and we ended up putting the wedding on a um, Google Excel spreadsheet, and it just felt really work-like, not really personal, and so I wanted to create something where we could do that kind of planning. And what better way to plan than to do a to-do list, which is essentially what this uh, came out to be. So kind of some of our core features is you can start off by setting an event and it could be like spring cleaning, even a grocery list, for instance. And you can't really do much with just this plain old grocery shopping. So if we look at our tasks, we can add more things that are going to go into it. So maybe we need apples or wheat bread. And as we all know, if you've ever sent somebody to the store for something else and they don't know exactly what it looks like, if you can just put in the picture, then life is a little bit easier. And you can add in your notes, you can set the due date, the priority, the status, whatever it is you wanna do. And if you're walking through the store looking through this, of course you don't wanna, who wants to look through a list? It's 2021, that's what paper is for. So we can mark it as complete and send it to the bottom where we could still see it. It's still accessible, but it's not in our way anymore. And we even have a little form to be able to go ahead and edit it. You can set the name, change whatever it is you want. It'll hold your previous settings. Uh, for the picture, I kind of set it up so that you can either leave it, remove it, or choose a new one. And we'll go ahead and set this priority to be high. So that's kind of our core functionality. And what else do we need when we have a list? We want to see dates and calendars and such. So I used the Beautify calendar. Looks like that. We can set, we can show the week view, the day, whatever it is we want. Beautify, their calendar is incredibly powerful. And lastly is the help button. At my last job that I had, we worked with a lot of different scheduling apps. And I found that for most people, they're not really intuitive, at least not right off the bat. So I made a little helper list to kind of explain it because ideally you should be able to hand this to your grandma. And if she has at least basic computer skills and can get on Google, she would theoretically be able to use this. And so, when I went around, uh, when I went about planning it, since we've done so many to-do lists throughout the course, I figured why deviate? Why not build upon what we've already got? And so that was a big part of it. Um, another issue that I had to overcome was when using this Beautify calendar, their CSS, pretty much all of it has an important statement above it, which means it overrides your own CSS. So I had to go in by hand and move everything and put it where it belongs. And it ended up working, but it was definitely a challenge. There, as far as, I had some changes that came about, like it started off to be more of a party planning and you could use it for that. But as we went along, I found that things like grocery list and little day planner, life planner stuff, that seemed to be more of just the natural flow of how it went around. So just to prove to you that everything works, we have our deletion. Uh, if you wanted to edit an, ex um, an existing, it's going to hold on to your dates and your times, and you can just set it to whatever it is you'd like. Be a long party. Um, so yeah, I'm a big believer in less is more, and that was uh, kind of what went into this, was making it just as polished as I could. Um, so yeah, I had to make sure that when we added notes that this could be as absolutely long as you wanted, you could put a whole novel here and not stretch out any pictures or not break anything. So we'll go ahead and add that.
and it will be accepted along with it. Um, so I know this is probably the less exciting part, but I'm going to show you guys some of the code that went behind it. I promise we won't spend too much time in this. So when I wrote my code, organization was really important on it. So I divided up all of my event related views and I added my doc strings and I grouped those together. And then the event tasks. And then I want put all my calendars at the bottom. And I did the same concept with my URLs, which really, really saved me at keeping this organized because there ended up being a lot of them. And when I did all of my uh, HTML templates, okay, maybe not that one. I also labeled it so I could break it off into smaller blocks of code because it's easier to work with this than it is to find that little piece in everything. So, and as for the future for this app, I, right now it's a multi-page application, but I'm thinking I want to translate it into a single page application more for the practice. And I would like to add some more JavaScript bells and whistles, maybe some animations just to make it a little bit more front end heavy. But uh, yeah, uh, that's my project for right now. Does anybody have any questions or comments that they want to bring up? Um, what did you like better, the front end or the back end? The front end. I love the styling side. Of I that. could tell. <laughs> oh, and just to give you guys a little proof of functionality on the user system and to show you what that template looks like. for a little proof of functionality. Nice. So are you going to um, actually use this application to plan your next party or something? If I could host a party, I absolutely would. <laughs> but I do think I'm going to use this grocery shopping. Um, yeah, just you know how we all have little things that come up in life that maybe you need to plan out, like packing anything that involves a list because i hate putting it down on paper there's so many things that i end up changing and oh maybe i need to add this and that and the other thing and it's just it's not very fun doing that on a piece of paper how does the layout change when you go to like mobile mode like if you're at the store and you're going through the list or whatever mobile let's show it in the iphone So the reactive design, it does need a little bit of work. That is more for the future. Um, but I did make sure that it would that it's at least functional, that it's at least usable um, for the meantime. Even the calendar is still it's still usable. Yeah, it looks good. And it's deployed, so you could use it at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Certainly can. I might use it later on today. Nice. Can you show where you had to like overwrite uh, Vutify? Because I think everyone who's used a framework and hasn't been able to get rid of some of its CSS would sort of know what you went through there. Mm -hmm. So this is something that Matthew had helped me with. Um, I ended up putting a style tag for it. And I, here, let's put this back into React Responsive. And I ended up just having to go through uh, the elements page just piece by piece and nudge everything where it could go. Dot row ended up being a really uh, challenging part for me because it's, it's the row. It changes. It affects everything. And what you do here is going to impact basically everything else. So I had to work around that. And it ended up being a little longer than I expected. 
but I was finally able to make my headers match. Very cool. Any other questions for Lisa? Okay, cool. Thanks, Lisa. Awesome work. Let's give Lisa a round of applause. Thank you, everybody. Cool. All right. I guess I'll start now. Get everything set up. All right. <clears throat> so uh, my application is called Climb Up. My inspiration for it was uh, basically like unless you're bouldering by yourself uh, or you have one of the auto belay devices, you pretty much always need a partner when you're out there, whether it's at the gym or whether it's like actually out on a rock, that's impossible. Uh, you're gonna free solo it or something. So this was basically a way to connect people. It's kind of social media-ish. Uh, users would go on here and they'd post, hey, I'm gonna go to the bouldering gym on Saturday. Um, does anybody wanna come with me? And logged in users have the ability to like it and also to attend it. Uh, <clears throat> Gosh, I'm terrible at public speaking sometimes. Um, major issues I had with this were honestly, uh, uh, using it as a single page application, which I'll demonstrate in a minute after I'm done talking, because I wanted this to be more fluid. I didn't want it to where you liked it and the page flashed or you commented and the page flashed. I wanted it all to dynamically render like the most modern way, the most modern website that uh, I can make at the time. But uh, let's step through the uh, functionality of it. So person who doesn't have an account yet, let's say this person's name is Matthew C. Not uh, not anybody in particular. Com. All right. So after the user uh, fills out all the information correctly, I've got some user, I've got some input validation. Password can't be like test or one, two, three or whatnot. I actually have to enter it decent password that's at least eight characters long, redirects to the main page and the user is automatically logged in. Uh, from here on the main page, we can see everybody's posts, it's like the one I was just on. I can like it, my likes will go up. I wanna attend it. Matthew C is now attending this. Let's throw out a comment. Yeah, I'll be there. Saves a comment and pops up right there. Still have some uh, test data I forgot about. Apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else can we do here? Uh, got new form posting. Uh, this shows up on everybody, no matter what, whether or not they're logged in or not, but they can't actually post without being logged in. It'll just throw a 404 error. Uh, let's test out a new post. New post. Uh, routes spelled looking correctly. Select city and just do that one. I want to go on Friday at 4.49 p.m. 4.50. Send it. And then right there. Appears dynamically. Uh, profile page is where the user can specifically they can edit their posts, so I can change a couple things in here and get coffee. Everybody loves coffee. Oh. I think I forgot to edit for some things in there. Basically the functionality of it, the funnest part of this was really building something from scratch because throughout the project, I, uh, you know, I used a bit of Python, 
for quite a bit of it. The basic for loops that Matthew taught us in the beginning of the class came came in handy. Using JSON response for <laughs> nearly everything, because uh, yeah, none of my Python views actually render it. Just uh, sends the data to the front end, and uh, Vue.js is what controls it from there. Let's see, so uh, I had a bunch of stuff uh, in the future for this. I would really like to incorporate uh, user profiles, like make the authors clickable. So you can go to their page, you can see all their posts on there. I'd like to include a maps API so you could uh, like pinpoint the place that you're going to go, whether it's a gym or it's a route that's 30 miles outside of town. I'd like to get that. Um, maybe some more stuff on the profile page, previous routes done, things you like, um, maybe like a photo gallery or something in some kind of folder. I don't know how, how I'd do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty proud of this project. There was some uh, long nights spent with Dustin and Pete uh, walking me through things. I think the hardest part really was uh, the like and attending buttons. Those were, uh, there were some times where I'd click it and everything would like or nothing would like. So those were the toughest, but eventually overcame them and now I, completely understand that feedback, which is nice. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, what was your favorite uh, part in making this whole thing? Uh, my favorite part was honestly just bringing everything together and having my own project to do. Like uh, a lot of the labs we do are awesome because you know you're like, we're going to learn how to use an API today. We're going to get uh, gonna eat, uh, get book data or we're gonna get rain data from Portland or Pokemon, something like that. And those are awesome because they really teach you the fundamentals. What I loved about this was being able to pick and choose like, okay, I did like something from this lab and I'd like to incorporate that feature or I really like how I use these modals. I want these in my application. Right on, good work. Thank you. William, what is your rough draft process? Are you, are you a pseudo codist as far as like writing on pen and paper? Do you whiteboard it? How do you, how do you move from point to point as far as the, the rough draft process? Uh, so what I did was I basically laid out a vision in the beginning uh, digitally. That's where I'm most comfortable. Uh, the only part that I really wrote out was uh, I used on my iPad and kind of quickly sketched out how I would do the website. A lot of it was influenced from other major social media websites, but I would say it's a conjunction between uh, typing out my goals and how, how I want to accomplish things and then actually drawing it out. Like I use Procreate for mine. And I was like, here, I want my posts here. Up top, I want my nav bar. I want likes to go here. Basically getting the shell together was how, how I started. That's awesome, man. Great job. Thank you. Do you think you would use Vue.js for this again? Yes. But I'd probably use the Vue CLI this time. Yeah. Is there any particular reason? Uh, it was pretty It was pretty intuitive. Initially, Vue was pretty, uh, it was a little bit of a steep learning curve at first, like uh, getting the API calls to go back. But after I got the hang of it and I really learned how to test it, that was my big problem in the beginning. And Matthew, Dustin, Pete can, uh, can attest to this, that I did have the nasty habit of completing steps one through 10 and then realizing that step two was an error. Uh, so I've learned how to use Vue.js in a way that I'm like, okay, small step accomplished, let's test it. Small step accomplished, let's test it. And that actually, once I did that, then I was able to I got this commenting system done in half a day, I think, maybe a day. Um, so that really, definitely. Other technologies though, I'd love to learn them all. Yeah. Um, what was the most uh, satisfying bug to, to fix? 
<laughs> well, uh, <laughs> not like that. There, <laughs> there are a few. Uh, the like button is one of them. Maybe attending though, because the like and attending button they uh, they do act similarly. Similarly, uh, that was pretty. That was pretty awesome. And then just towards the end, when I was editing things and trying to make uh, my application more succinct, taking out a lot of the parent statements and readdressing how I was having my modals. Uh, uh, at one point, I I cut off a div tag somewhere. And uh, yeah, if you're using JavaScript and you cut off a div tag, you will have a wall of red on your console. So I ended up going fine tooth combing that and eventually found that little missing div and then ah, all the red's gone and it's just console's clean. That was pretty satisfying too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Getting the modals to work was cool. Uh, overall, I was uh, definitely still a long way to go with this application, but uh, you know, it's always a work in progress and I plan on learning a few other tricks and implementing that uh, in the deployed version. You might be happy to know there's software out there specifically designed to test your code each time you change something. To look into that. I was actually Googling a couple things that were like, uh, you know, take your code and just put it in this and it might find where your error is. I almost did it once. But uh, yeah, it's my application, climb up. Thanks for the name suggestion, Matthew. Uh, any other questions? Or wanna see anything else? I may have skipped over something or I can demonstrate something else. Did you show a uh, sorting posts by city? Oh yeah. That's my city. Let's go your team. Sort by your team. I'm based in Eugene, so that's kind of why we uh did that one. Yeah, you can sort there. It's Portland is another one that should have a bunch in there, I think. Portland. Yeah. And if the user for whatever reason uh they're unable to find the city they want, whether it's by sorting or a new post, you can just go in here and uh, let's go bend. It's a fun place. Then bend is right there. Very fun, nice. uh, yeah, I think that's about it for the functionality. I mean, we can log in, just do PDX climber. Easy peasy. Well, not really, but yeah, it's my application. Very cool. Thanks, Will. Thank you. Cool. Let's give Will a round of applause. Hmm. Thanks. Awesome job, dude. Um, very proud of you both. You know, I I definitely recommend thinking back to how much programming you knew when you started, um, how much you picked up in, in just three months. Um, it's kind of amazing. And uh, yeah, you know, my, my biggest recommendation is just keep coding at least four hours a day. You know, you gotta keep those skills fresh and try new things and, um, and also, you know, utilize the resources that we have here at PDX Code Guild, stay involved in the community. Um, we're still going to have tech talks going on. We've still got career services you guys can take advantage of and, um, yeah, take the advanced course, which is great. Um, and, um, yeah, there's, there's meetups, you know, just stay active. Um, Sherry, are you there? I don't know if Sherry's on. I want to say, just keep on coming to study hall. Like your alumni, you're still welcome there. Um, I didn't TA this class, but I feel like you two are my students because you went there so consistently. And I was already very familiar with these capstones before you presented. So um, yeah, I agree with Matthew. Just like I've seen you to improve a lot and you did a really good job. These are great projects. Yeah. 
Thanks everybody for coming.